Hello everyone, welcome back to BDA Law. My name is Brago, and today we have a special video. Today we're talking about all the moments, all the foreshadowing for Zoro having conquered hockey. Now, if you've been living under a rock or you're just not a part of the One Piece community, a very heavy topic, a very prevalent topic so far has been Zoro and his confirmed conquers hockey. Shit, even the Crunchyroll account has confirmed that Zoro has conquers hockey. There are animators on Twitter confirming this is Zoro conquers hockey. So guys, Zoro has conquers hockey. Again, if you have not heard. So I felt like it was appropriate to go through all the foreshadowing and highlight all the moments throughout the story, mind you, that Zoro has foreshadowed to having conquers hockey. Now, before we talk about conquers hockey even further, I would like for you guys to focus on that red button right down there that says subscribe. If you haven't clicked it, click that red button. And if you've already clicked it, drop a like. And now let's continue with the video. So what we're going to highlight today is all the foreshadowing from pre time skip to now, as well as moments in the story that exemplifies why Zoro has been and now confirmed to be a Supreme King. Let's start it off though with what is a Supreme King and what it means to be a Supreme King. This is best explained by Rayleigh. In chapter Chapter 597 where he talks about the ability to overwhelm the color of the Supreme King. He said most people who've made a name for themselves in this world, they possess this power. Though you can control the color of the Supreme King, you can't train it to be stronger directly. It's the embodiment of the spirit of the user. The only way to make it stronger is for the user to grow stronger. So with that explanation, keep in mind Zoro as a character and things he's gone through or shown throughout the story and how Oda has been throwing bits and pieces of things out there for us to understand. Even though I haven't said it, Zoro as a character is literally the embodiment of what a Supreme King is. So without further ado, let's go through every single moment in the story where Zoro has either shown the qualities of a king or it's a straight up foreshadow of Zoro having Congress hockey. Let's go. I suppose first we'll start with qualities of a king and the hints throughout the story. Let's go to chapter 112. Luffy vs. Zoro. That is literally the title. Luffy vs. Zoro. This is in Whiskey Peak. While Luffy was asleep, he did not realize that all the townspeople were actually bounty hunters. So for Zoro, he protected the Straw Hats by defeating all of these people by himself. But of course, Luffy does not know this. All Luffy remembers is that these people fed him. So for that, he had issues with Zoro. So then we had an entire back and forth with Luffy vs. Zoro where it got to a point where Zoro was saying, hey, this is an opportunity for us to compare fists versus swords. The fight didn't necessarily end because of Nami, but this was a cool moment to see just how close Luffy and Zoro were in terms of power. But the moment in question here is strictly in the anime. Now, people may say the anime is not canon, the anime does not know enough, but this past weekend, everyone was up in arms because the anime has had the most definitive use of Conqueror's Hockey we've ever seen from Zoro in the story. In the anime episode, when they were about to go in for a final attack before Nami stopped them, there was electricity in the air. Now, this is very old animation, so it's hard to compare it to now, but back then, and how we view the black lightning now, that's how those sparks were viewed back then. Those were the sparks emitting between Luffy and Zoro, which gave me the inclination that Zoro had conquered hockey because obviously Luffy had it. So for me, this was the first hint of Zoro actually having conquered hockey. Next, we have the Sabaody intimidation, and this is back in the anime in episode 395, where Zoro, of course, is lost again, and then he's seeking directions, but he's approached by a bunch of bandits. So Zoro is asking them where was Grove number one, and for them, they recognize who Zoro is, so they say they're going to take its 120 million berry bounty at the time. They go to attack Zoro and all Zoro does is glare at them. It immediately puts them on guard. One of the individuals even dropped their sword and started giving directions. Remember what Rayleigh said, the color of the Supreme King is the power to overwhelm. Zoro clearly did that back then. Next, we have the Fishman Island Brag. Now, this is one of the more popular ones that people remember because it was so obvious and overt, it couldn't have been more clear in my opinion. This is after Luffy knocked out 50,000 Fishmen with the color of the Supreme King. And then we get reaction from the Straw Hats. Sanji, of course, says, the color of the Supreme King. I knew he had it in him. And of course, with translations, there's so many different variations of this. But pretty much what he said is, he'd better be able to do at least that or I'd have to take over as captain. There are only so many ways you can interpret that. And for me, I took that as Zoro has conquered hockey and he could probably do close to 50,000. So if Luffy couldn't do that, he would have to say he was a captain now. Next, we have the Punk Hazard Daishinkan, one of my favorite chapters, 687. 
beast. And a lot of you should remember this chapter because it's one of the chapters that I think the community went crazy over well at the time. And of course, Zoro versus Monet. So we have Toshigi versus Monet at first. And Monet is getting the better of Toshigi to the point that Monet was about to chew straight through Toshigi's shoulder. All of a sudden, a flying slash was sent from Zoro right to Monet's cheek. And then Zoro said, time's up. You talk a big game, but ended up taking your time. I'll be moving things along now. Monet then says to herself, wait, I thought he would not hurt a woman. He came at me just now with every intention of cutting. And Zoro responds, it seems like you underestimated me. Back when you realized you couldn't measure up, you should have run. It's true that there are things that I'd rather not cut. But let me ask you, have you ever met a beast that you could be sure would never bite? Because I sure haven't. Zoro then makes a move towards her and Zoro was so intimidating at that point that Monet could not move. Zoro then used Dai Shin Kan and cut Monet in half but didn't kill her because he didn't use hockey but he intimidated her enough to the point that she was frozen still. The power to overwhelm. Toshigi then adds more context. She's lost control of her body. It's thanks to her overwhelming fear of such a strong opponent and the fact that she'd be dead had he used hockey? Is this really one way to win? Again guys, a consistent theme we see here, the power to overwhelm. Next we have Zoro's strange intensity in Wano, and this was towards Urashima, the strongest sumo wrestler in Wano. Zoro then stumbles upon Urashima, then he politely asked him to move his fat ass out of the way. Urashima then says, why would I do that? In the manga, Urashima just has a flashback of Zoro's strange intensity. In the anime, we actually see it. Zoro just gave him that glare again, and there was a slight effect to the point that Urashima instantly moved out of the way. Again, overwhelming. We then have the Wano Dai Shinkan. And this is in episode 922 of the anime where Zoro is actually gambling with Yasue. And the men there, they're cheating him because they have someone that's hiding, turning the die every time Zoro bets. Zoro figures it out, does a no sword style Tatsumaki, and then they attack him. Zoro then does his dragon quake, his Dai Shin Kan. And the more I see dragon quake, the more it makes sense why Zoro and what happened in chapter 1010, where for dragon quake, again for the anime, Zoro's eyes start glowing, there's an effect, and Zoro cuts through these individuals well not literally but they feel like they've been cut in half to the point that they pass out which if you think about the theory of progression versus monet she was intimidated to the point that she could not move for these men they were knocked out of course monet is stronger than these individuals but they were knocked out and they weren't even cut it seems like zoro in this attack is channeling that congress hockey that ability to overwhelm through this attack through his blades, where someone like Fujitora, he has eaten a devil fruit, but he's more comfortable channeling his gravity through his sword. And for Zoro, it seems to be the same way with Conqueror's Hockey. Next, we have the tease of the raid, and this is chapter 997, where I think Oda was giving us a hint of what was to come. This is the chapter where Kiku's arm flies through the roof. Zoro gets upset, obviously, and cuts down a poo. Then he makes a declaration that he was there to cut down Kaido. It seems like Zoro was so upset that his fury caused an earthquake, which led Brooke to ask him, hey, was that the color of the Supreme King? And he again references Zoro as a beast. And Zoro says, you know, I did not do this. I'm really intrigued to see how the anime handles this scene. So those are the moments in the story in which it shows that Zoro has the ability or just he embodies this will. But there are also other moments in which Zoro has shown the qualities of a king. All the way back in chapter 190, it showed a glimpse of Zoro's ambition to be on top. This was the chapter with Baroque works offering him a position and him turning it down unless he would be the boss. We then have the other supernovas back in chapter 499 talking about Zoro's killing intent, mentioning that he looks like someone that doesn't follow orders. Again, Apu literally called Zoro a beast. I think it's fitting that Zoro cut him down in the same chapter that Brooke referenced him as a beast. It all came full circle. Apu got bitten by the beast. There are also other multiple references throughout the story showing Zoro's strong will versus Mihawk when he was willing to die rather than take a step back versus Arlong with his injuries from Mihawk, he could barely stand, but he was still fighting Arlong. In Little Garden, chapter 122, Manzoro is literally about to cut off his own legs. And because of Zoro's will, he said that he would follow along because of Zoro's spirit. And we can't forget about chapter 485, when Zoro was literally willing to risk everything for Luffy's dream even his own. So guys, those are all the moments in which we can remember Zoro having hints or straight up in your face saying he has Conqueror's Hockey. Of course, in chapter 1010, we had Kaido saying literally that Zoro was using Conqueror's Hockey. It is no more doubt 
Zoro is a Supreme King user. But guys, give me your thoughts. Are there any other moments in which you can think Zoro had hints of him being a Conqueror's Hockey user? Or rather, which moment for Zoro was your favorite foreshadow? Guys, give me your thoughts. Make sure to like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDace. Follow me on Instagram at BragoD.ace. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate all you guys so much. Guys, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Start doubting me, I felt lost. I rewrite it.